this motor could be burned up. There's a possibility that this motor is fried and that's why this machine stopped working one day. So we could be doing all this for nothing. Today, we're gonna to attempt to fix a sewing machine motor with frayed wiring. Stick around to the end of the video because if we get this motor running, we're gonna use a tool that you haven't seen me use before. In fact, you've probably never seen it used before at all. Stick around as we repair this motor and see if we can get it running. I'm Wes, the sewing machine repair guy. Let's take this thing apart. So today we're gonna to get into this motor and we're gonna see if we can repair it. As you can see, the frayed wires go all the way down into the motor. So you have to pull it apart and we have to figure out how to get these wires pulled out of there and put new wires in so that we can use this motor another day. Okay, so this motor has come apart further than you should really ever take one of these motors. They're not really made to be serviced like this. And the reason I had to do that is because the cable is just mangled, destroyed, and even going into the motor casing, you had bare wires. So there's no way that this would work, be plugged in, none of that. Um, you would just trip a breaker as soon as you tried to plug it in or you would die. You know, one of those two options would happen. So what I have here, normally I would just get a new motor and call it quits. But this being YouTube, I figured um, I have nothing to lose except for my time. And uh, right now, seems like a great time as any to attempt to fix this motor. The insulation is just cracking right off. So this, this whole wire would have to be replaced. Um, there's two wires. One connects to this coil on the top. So there's a coil wire that goes around like this on top. So this, one of these wires connects to that. And then there's a coil wire on the bottom and the other wire connects to that. It connects right here and goes around through this tape right here and then right here. So that's one and then the other one just connects right in here. So since we have time on our hands, we're going to see if we can cut this tape and get in there. I almost did it, but then I decided to go ahead and actually talk to you about it. 
and see if we can get in there. Now, they put a lacquer coating over this, so I may just start getting into it and then decide it's not worth it. Uh, that's definitely a possibility, but uh, we're gonna give it a try. The other thing is, I might try and get the rotor out of here so it's out of my way. I just gotta worry about the brushes. So we're gonna give that a try. So this is, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, this stuff is so, it's been on here for so long. If I were to guess, so the sewing machine this came out of was a treadle, a new home treadle from 1921. The, at some point, someone put this motor in there. Uh, I don't, let's see, I don't think I have a year on here. No, General Motors Corporation. There's no year. Um, if I already guessed, probably 60s is when this motor was put in here. So just ruin some of that varnish. Yeah, I can see the solder point right here, so we might actually be able to do this. The funny part about this is uh, this motor could be burned up. There's a possibility that this motor is fried and that's why this machine stopped working one day. So we could be doing all this for nothing. And we won't know until it's put together, all repaired. Okay, I found a copper wire and I think that's the one that was connected to that. So it was soldered together on this side. That's all it is, one of these, all these coils of wires, it's only one that gets connected. Yeah, see this one's unraveling. We might have a winner here. Okay. So what we have to make sure is that we have all the varnish off or lacquer, whatever they use, off of these wires without breaking the wires. So maybe a little sandpaper, gently sandpaper. All right, so now I'm kind of giving away my secrets. You can find these plugs on Amazon. They're injection molded. No wires are gonna pop out of there. Nobody's gonna get shocked. And look at the difference here. The, this is a vintage plug. I just don't trust these. I don't like reusing them. I just don't feel safe reusing these plugs. They're not, uh, you know, there's no you spill a drop of water on there, it's gonna short those together. This right here could nearly be submerged before anything's gonna happen. So what you do is you take this, you find out the length that you need, you add a little bit for good measure, 
cut it off. And now you have a perfectly sized plug for use on your new project. So those are tinned with solder. Now we want to take our, we want to be very gentle with this because I don't want to lose it. Try everything I can do to prep before I have this cord running through the casing, making my life difficult. This is called capped on tape designed for high temperatures and also designed to be an insulator. A lot of things, a lot of times this gets used on batteries. This is my first time using it on a motor. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, feeling safer about the motor right now. I'm gonna see if I can tin these little copper pieces. This is what I mean by annoying. So one is gonna solder there, and the other one is gonna come around and solder there. Ideally, this will work great and will not interfere with the rotor.
So I finally got my brushes back in. I've taped them off so that I can slide my rotor through. And hopefully the rotor will go through. Okay. Now ideally I can pull this tape off easily. Okay, that actually worked. So did that, that's amazing. And the brushes will hold this together. And now we can do our real check with the fluke. Two hundred seventy ohms. Two hundred sixty. 260 ohms, that sounds good to me. I'm going through two sets of coils. Uh, one thing probably should check just to make sure. Let's try ground, the rotor. It's mega ohms. So far, so we've got it halfway together. We've got a plug. We've got our two brushes in. We got um, these standoffs here that are holding the brush assembly. And we got all of our hardware on there. I'm only doing these guys hand tight because they are just locating this. They don't. It, doesn't need to be really, really tight on there. And if you do, you could crack this because this is not metal right here. This is an insulator, probably melamine or something like that. And we're almost to the point where we can put everything back together on the motor side of the house. Let's, uh, do a little couple of little drops of oil for good measure. You'll notice I haven't cleaned the outside of this thing. It was more important for me to get this thing working before I did anything like that. I have a motor that's reassembled and now we get to play with the toy that I use to test motors. But first we gotta clean up a little bit. This is called a Variac. You can see you've got all the numbers all the way from zero to 120, that's 120%. It's a auto transformer. Um, so it'll change my voltage from zero to 120% of the voltage is coming through my circuit, which is 110 volts. So we plug in here, and this is where we get to see if this works. So we'll flip it on, 
and then slowly ramp us up. And our motor is working. And I'm not dead. All right. This is very similar to what you have in your foot. Well, actually it's not similar at all to what you have in your foot pedal, but it does a similar thing so that you can adjust the speed. That fan, yeah, that motor is working great. Now I'm gonna be honest here, I really was planning on showing you if this didn't work. Uh, but it did work, and it makes me happy. But I will tell you, I've tried to fix a motor before in the past, and it did not work. So I knew I had about a 50-50 chance of being able to do it. And I figured I'd bring you along for the ride, and guess what? Our motor works. Now we gotta clean it up, put it back together, and continue working on our sewing machine. Thanks for watching.